When it comes to current day Marvel comics, one of the biggest complaints I often hear is that after decades upon decades of deep ingrown continuity, the universe needs to be rebooted. And while Marvel have regularly attempted to freshen up their comic book landscape on a seemingly yearly basis with their Marvel Nows, all new, all different and fresh start initiatives, they seem to quickly find themselves back in the same position. Whereas DC Comics is no stranger to rebooting their universe for better or for worse, Marvel has always sought to maintain their long-standing canon, with everything from the Captain America comics of the 1940s, the first appearance of Fantastic Four, Spider-Man and the X-Men throughout the 1960s, all the way to the present day wrapped in one singular continuity. However, it's interesting to note that during the 1990s, Marvel Comics did actually entertain this notion of relaunching and rebooting a part of their universe, attempting to turn poorly selling titles over to superstar writer and artists to revigorate in fresh new ways, while still maintaining the legacy of their more popular books. This is the story of Marvel Comics Heroes Reborn. The 1990s was an interesting decade for the comic book industry, one defined by historic highs and tremendous lows. While the early years of the decade saw comic book sales reach never before seen heights, partly due to the rise of speculators looking to find the next million dollar comic book much like Action Comics number 1 or Detective Comics number 39 in decades prior, but soon after the market saw a remarkable downturn in following years. Coupled with this, in 1992, Marvel Comics lost several of its high-profile writer and artists, most notably Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Eric Larson and Jim Lee, who left the publishing company to form Image Comics, a venture which allowed comic creators to publish original material while still maintaining the copyright to their creations, in contrast to the work-for-hire system which had dominated both Marvel and DC. The news of Marvel losing their biggest creators hit the company hard, with stocks falling by three dollars 25 a share when this news became public. Meanwhile, Image became an overnight success with titles such as Spawn, Wildcats, Youngblood and the Savage Dragon becoming smash hits immediately, rivaling the sales of the Big Two's most popular books. And by the mid 1990s, this trend had continued while Marvel saw their sales stagnate and their stories failed to garner the same critical acclaim as they had in years prior. And by 1996 especially, Marvel Comics was in dire straits. The company had saw its finances diminish after the burst of the speculator bubble, coupled with a series of bad investments, most notably the distribution company Heroes World, and Marvel quickly found themselves only a few months away from having to file for bankruptcy. They needed a big success, something to bring back the many readers who had flocked over to their rival publishers. So what did they do? Well. If you pardon the pun, they decided that the characters needed to update their image. Marvel Comics struck a deal with two of the main figures who had left to form Image Comics, Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld. This deal would farm out several of Marvel's more poorly selling titles and allow the pair to reinvent the characters within them within their own designs. These titles included the likes of The Avengers both as a team book and as individual titles for Captain America and Iron Man and the Fantastic Four. Jim Lee's subsidiary Wildstorm handled Fantastic Four and Iron Man, while Bob Liefeld's Extreme Studios took over Captain America and the Avengers. This idea was not too dissimilar to the X-Men relaunch Age of Apocalypse, which had just recently concluded, and Marvel, Lee and Liefeld very much saw this as an opportunity to refresh some of the more older characters, who in the decade that belonged to the X-Men, Spider-Man and the X-Force, had found themselves floundering. But there was one problem. How would these writers be able to hit the reset button on these characters while they still existed in a universe layered and mired with continuity? Enter Onslaught. Onslaught, created by Scott Lobdell, Mark Wade, and Andy Kubert, was a character created in June 1996 as an evil entity formed from the consciousness of Charles Xavier and Magneto. Lobdell described the character's inception as a way to reverse engineer this editorial mandate, stating that, when word comes down that Marvel was shipping off those characters to another universe, me and Bob Harris are sitting around trying to come up with a story that makes sense for the X-Men to stay where they are, but those other characters to go. The question became, who has that power? And I said, well, 
Onslaught can do it. So we started to figure out why the X-Men would be involved too, but it was really once there was a need for Heroes Reborn, then we reverse engineered the creation of Onslaught. In the storyline which led up to Heroes Reborn, Onslaught sought to absorb the powers of mutants Franklin Richards and X-Man Nate Grey in order to destroy all mutants and humans alive. As a result, the X-Men teamed up with the Avengers, the Fantastic Four and even Doctor Doom to battle the villain, with all but the mutant heroes ultimately falling in the climactic battle. Following the apparent deaths of the aforementioned characters, it was revealed that Franklin Richards had actually transported them all to a pocket universe dubbed Counter-Earth. This in turn allowed for Liefeld and Lee to retell the origins of the Avengers and the Fantastic Four in a more modern context without the shackles of canon and established continuity. While the origins of characters such as Captain America largely remain the same, Others such as the Fantastic Four saw more notable changes. For instance, now it was revealed that Ben Grimm had actually served as a pilot in the Gulf War, not the Second World War, and that Sue and Johnny had been financial backers for Reed's rocket ship to Mars. However, even in the immediate announcement of Marvel's plans for Heroes Reborn, skeptics were high both in the audience and from within the industry. For instance, writer Kurt Busiek stated that the Marvel reader is essentially being told that Marvel's long-term history is more or less irrelevant. It's secondary to what will make the characters more popular and what will make the company more money. And while this relaunch caused an initial rise in sales for these titles, much of the success was brief, with questionable creative decision ultimately plaguing the relaunch from the very beginning. This is best displayed by, after only six issues into his 12 issue contract, Rob Liefeld was relieved of his duties of writer and artist of Captain America and the Avengers, due to declining sales on the titles. Walt Simonson was brought on to finish the Avengers run, while Jim Lee took over the rest of Captain America. In particular, the declining sales of Captain America epitomised much of the failure of Heroes Reborn. Prior to the relaunch, this Captain America series had actually been doing quite well. It had been recently taken over by Mark Wade and Rob Garney, whose run was garnering a lot of success and rising sales. Wade specifically recalled his displeasure when finding out about the plans to relaunch Cap under Rob Liefeld, stating that, Rob faxed me his 22 pages of that first issue to ask if I wanted to dialogue it to keep part of the continuity of the creators. I looked at it and said, no thank you. It just wasn't for me, this big giant barrel chested Captain America and the teenage sidekick. I just didn't feel good about it. Additionally, it seemed like the factors which caused Heroes Reborn to fail had been there since the very beginning. Scott Lobdell noted that almost everyone at Marvel was upset when they found out. From the top down, the company had grown so frustrated with editorial's efforts to jumpstart sales that they were going to turn outside vendors to reimagine those properties. I think it's important to note the desperation attached to Heroes Reborn on behalf of Marvel, particularly in their financial problems under the leadership of then-CEO Rob Perelman, being little more than months away from having to file for bankruptcy. As Tom Brevoort described, Heroes Reborn was announced and three to four weeks later, they had a massive bloodletting here. They let an enormous number of people go from every strata of Marvel. Heroes Reborn was Marvel's last ditch attempt to jumpstart some life in a decaying body, a final hurrah to salvage its legacy while staring extinction in the face. This chaotic state behind the scenes at Marvel was coupled with the sudden death of editor Mark Gruenwald on August 12th, 1996. Brevoort specifically recalls that between the last regular Captain America issues being finished and before the first Heroes Reborn issues, Mark had died. I know logically that this had nothing to do with the other, but it seemed scary. It seemed like Destiny saying, yeah, this is the end of an era. It's an understatement to say that the behind the scenes at Marvel were chaotic at the time, and the botched relaunch of their lukewarm titles under Heroes Reborn did little to remove any strain. This, alongside a significant downturn in sales, which suggested that the initial surge when the relaunch occurred, were largely due to the alterations of the status quo, not intrigue in the new stories, saw Marvel cancel Heroes Reborn almost a year after its inception. According to Stan Lee, Marvel had actually proposed continuing the universe on indefinitely, but only under the condition that Lee would oversee some of the titles, which he refused. As a result, after 13 issues for each title, Heroes Reborn came to a conclusion in December 1997's Heroes Reborn The Return. 
Franklin Richards brought these heroes back from their pocket dimension, and the traditional status quos were returned to normal, and Marvel's attempted reboot was rarely talked about thereafter, besides from a 10 year anniversary story where the Exiles visited the universe in Exiles numbers 81 to 82. In many ways, Heroes Reborn encapsulates 90s comics to a T. It attempted to be more louder, extreme, and changed the status quos in ways not necessarily needed. While the idea behind the series was solid to offer up some of the company's more struggling titles to superstar writer and artists to reinvent, almost everything done by Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, even in his cut short run, demonstrated a lot of the flaws with that decade's style of storytelling. The most famous image of this entire run comes from Liefeld's rendition of Captain America, it's excessive, in your face, and somewhat garish, and this speaks true both for the series and for this era of comics as a whole. Personally, I liken Marvel's attempts here to the Coca-Cola's botched New Coke relaunch, and they seem to have a similar effect. For instance, Coke, when faced with declining sales and losing the Cola Wars to Pepsi, decided to reinvent their formula and create a new Coke, for the new generation. This backfired as people failed to warm to the new Coke, and yet it could be seen as a brilliant strategy, as it caused people to miss the old Coke. This analogy also stands true for Marvel. While Heroes Reborn failed to breathe new life into these characters, these warped, extreme versions of Marvel's classic heroes made people reminisce about what they used to be, and made their return to the main Marvel Universe and their return to the traditional status quo a triumphant moment. Heroes Reborn may not have been exactly the shot in the arm that Marvel expected, but it may have been what it needed. It was Marvel embroiled in the most 1990s a comic could be, facing itself in the mirror, asking where the good old days went, and reminded both the company and the fans what Iron Man, Captain America, the Avengers, and the Fantastic Four could be. And when you think about it like that, Heroes Reborn might have been a necessary evil, because without it, we may not have gotten the incredible stories within the Marvel Universe that we love so much today. Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to leave a comment down below and discuss anything we talked about in the video itself. What are your thoughts on Marvel's failed Heroes Reborn relaunch of the 1990s? Could it have worked and why didn't it? I can't wait to hear what you have to say as always. If you're interested in more about this subject, I have a couple of recommendations for you. Firstly, a lot of the information I gathered from this video is based on Marvel Comics The Untold Story by Sean Howe. It's a fantastic read just on the behind the scenes of Marvel Comics and it has helped me in a ton of videos and is going to help me in even more videos coming up in the next few months. And the second thing I want to recommend is I did a video uh, last year on the Marvel bankruptcy scenario and how Marvel had to file for bankruptcy and the legal history that the company went through. So if you want to know a bit more about what happened after Heroes Reborn, I suggest checking that out. There should be a link on screen. If you're new here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can find a written version of this video on my website, owenlikescomics.com, and you can follow me on Twitter just at owenlikescomics. That's all for me. I will see you all next time. So until then, take care and keep reading.